Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our webinar today uh, in the series of webinar for Voices for, of Education. I am Nina Lobak. I am part of the Richmond Academic Team, and I will host this live today. Today, I am delighted to have Paul Seligson with us, and he because he has kindly accepted to share his knowledge with us. Paul Seligson has been uh, in the EFL world for about over 40 years now, and he has um, been uh, known as a Latin um, American specialist, uh, as he has many famous ELT publications. And I'll name a few of the ones that he has published with Richmond, like Awesome, like Kids Web, which it's, is the third edition right now, and uh, also finalist of the uh, Elton's 2010, 2020 for Excellence in Course Innovation. Essentially English, uh, English ID, which is now in the second edition, and it focuses on Latin American learners. And uh, the follow-on, follow which is Identities 1 and 2 as well. He works freelance from his home in Brighton, and I am sure he is missing Brazil a lot uh, because um, he told me so. So, Paul, thank you so much for being here with us today, for having accepted our invitation. Um, hope that even though so far away from us, you managed to feel a little bit of all the warm welcome we send you from Brazil. It's a great pleasure to have you. And it's wonderful to be back. And oi Brazil, tudo bem? Estou com água de coco. Feliz pensando em Brazil. I'm, I'm, it's wonderful to be here. I just wish it was physical, but here we are. This is what we've got. So let's enjoy ourselves. Thank you, Paul. Um, before we move on with uh, what Paul has to share with us, let, re let me remind you all that are following there uh, in this live that you can send Paul selling some questions via the uh, comments on the chat, and um, I, we will try to answer them all. During this live, you take a look at the chat as uh, we will be sharing some links for you to arrange meetings with our uh, Richmond um, colleagues if you want to know more about our materials, uh, as well as links to the Richmond Share blog, and which are totally uh, free and you can download them and read them online. And uh, there's also a link for the certificate that you can get for this very own uh, live today. I'd like to point out that this this live is being recorded and that you can just follow it on on Facebook or YouTube after on if you uh, don't manage to watch it live today. So to begin turn, with, turn off, turn, turn off. <laughs> can you hear me, Paul? Sorry, Nina, I'm I'm playing around. <laughs> yes, I can, okay, darling. I Hello. I, I couldn't I couldn't understand what you said. Okay, so. The first question is now, um, I would like to ask you, um, what is your view on the effect the materials used can have on building self-esteem to Brazilian kids? Self-esteem? Um, yes. The most important thing I think in any material is that it, it respects who the students are, what they already know, that we embrace all their contributions, strong, weak, right or wrong, and we try to give them all sufficient support and an equal chance as well, of course. And we provide the most likely route, as best we possibly can, given that we have large classes, for each of them to be successful in, in their own learning of English. Because without uh, both empathy towards English classes, and security in them, and of course some success, their chances of, of building self-esteem are, as a linguist are slim indeed. But uh, to my mind, it's also um, achieved by having a, a clearly Brazilian method. So they recognize themselves and the fact that it's addressing them. Uh, in particular, the fact that they all, all are from Brazil and that they all speak Portuguese. And I think, one of the key things that I've been pushing, as you know, for decades is 
to stop this no Portuguese, no Portuguese thinking English level. It's impossible to, to learn a, a second yeah. language without reference to a first language, as you know. And um, what's more motivating, if you want to build self-esteem, is, is recognition of yourself and, and, and the words in your own language. You know, it's the same in Portuguese. Yeah, hallelujah, teacher. That seems to me so important. Rather than saying, don't do that, think in English, which is a nonsense. What we should be doing is, is building on what you can see there is the greatest pedagogical resource they bring is Portuguese. And what they're doing all the time is switching in their heads, especially when you have two. And it's the fundamental support that they have is that they speak Portuguese already. So rather than suppressing this, we should be celebrating and building a method you know, thank God we speak Portuguese rather than trying to push it away and, and separate the two. Even in any bilingual school, the students cannot address a second language in spite of their first language. All the experts agree now, and I've been saying this for three or four decades, the first time I came to Brazil in way back in the 90s, that 1990, I gave a talk about ways to use the mother tongue in, in language teaching and and slowly I think the the research has caught up with this and now if you look around you can read these quotations uh, yeah translations inevitable the only way to stop it is to cut off their heads but I don't think you'd be allowed to do that um, as soon as they are there they're going to translate um, contrast is a time efficient way we should be contrasting it's similar it's different it's the same hallelujah that seems to me the way I've been suggesting, the way Kids Web has been thought through, and most of my methodology has been thought through. If you look at the, 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 the slide now, you can see how things have changed so much over the last 20 years. Um, we used to all try and be native speakers at the yellow box. Now the goal is to be bilingual, multilingual, plurilingual, not in native English, but in English as a lingua franca, ELF. And so the, the idea of turning your students in magically into native speakers, thankfully, has, has, has disappeared, quite rightly so. The idea of teaching uniquely and exclusively in English, monolingual teaching, has now moved on to accepting that students will always be shifting between the two languages. Uh, and that Portuguese used to be seen as an obstacle. In fact, it's not an obstacle at all. It's a resource. And because Portuguese is one of the 10 closest languages to English, the same as Spanish, French, all the Romance languages are in the top 10 most similar languages to English. It's ridiculous to ignore them and try and work without them. Let me show you a few more little slides there. Um, language learning is always changing, says Larson Freeman. A few facts which I think will give, give strength and, and, and optimism to teachers too. If you look at that, 85% of the world's conversations don't involve a native speaker. Native English has always been the hardest to understand and to produce. Very few teachers globally are native speakers of English anyway. 90 to 95% now are non-native. And the fact that you are, as a teacher, effectively bilingual and able to, to see the class from the student's perspective uh, helps to build the empathy and the self-esteem which we've talked about already, provided you don't work against that, but you work with it, given the right method and the right goal. Um, so it's a huge advantage for our students, given the right approach, but it has to be with the right approach. If you use an international approach, ignoring Portuguese, you're only going to slow things down and make it more complicated. And a lot of the weaker students will never learn English that way. And it, you. Would be a waste. it would be a waste. Uh, Paul, we have some comments. And Canon August, August, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, has said that you are always awesome. Uh -huh. Thank wow. you very much. Yeah. I love you and, too. Uh, and Eternalise Eterna <laughs> Eterna has said that, has commented on what you were mentioning now, which is it's translanguaging with so we are we have been talking about so much in the academic community nowadays Absolutely. and 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 you have been uh, working through it for a longer period than what has been uh, called into people's attention right now and have, having that in mind i would like to ask you another question which is related which is working with cognate 
cognates is key to this learning process for Romance language speakers, which is our Absolutely. case. So uh, how can being aware of that help the teacher? Um, well, for example, uh, I mean, translangu translanguaging means bringing all your re linguistic resources to the party. You know, your, your body language, your, your knowledge of the mother tongue, everything that you can do, that's translanguaging, not simply code switching, but using all your linguistic resources. What teachers fail to do, I think, often they will fall back on speaking Portuguese in the classroom. You don't need to do that. If uh, You can still, you can effectively cheat. If you look at this, you, if you use these verbs to give your instructions, the students will always be hearing English, which is comprehensible. Now, it's not native speaker, uh, divine English, but it's totally comprehensible international English, and it allows a document, and then say it more quickly, let's create a document. The students, aha, uh -huh, they'll, they'll get the message, and you're speaking English, delivering English, the self-esteem will grow, the effect, the effectiveness of your teaching will go if you give instructions like those. If you say go on, they'll say go where, teacher? Where is on, teacher? But if you say continue in pairs, they'll understand you, etc. So instructions using this language, you're using international effective English as a lingua franca. Um, the same with this thing here. If you look at these adjectives, if you look at the, uh, they're the 45 most common cognate adjectives, which uh, if you look on the, the corpus, various corpuses, these are the ones which come up most. I've put them into suffix pattern groups, all the owls, there, the ibles, the commune, humano, the religious, they're all in different groups. You can see them. I'll leave it for you to take a, a screenshot if you want. Uh, um, to me, this is happy Christmas. This is just simply saying to students, you, you, happy Christmas. If, and and sh by showing them this language, using this language yourself, you can stay in English in the class when most teachers would fly back to Portuguese. And, and, and you can help the students to express themselves much more quickly. Yeah, definitely. And I've been uh, following following your uh, path and your studies and research on this. And it does make a huge difference to the teacher and to uh, the, the choices you made here. And mm. I would like to then extend it a little bit to the kids itself in the reality of large classes and uh, twice a week meeting sometimes. <laughs> so how, how can we link it? It's a tough job. Yeah, I know. I, I, we've all been there. Um, well, I've shown you already, if you go back to the previous slide, I, I, I always mark the stress on words. In Kids Web, we've started to do this in the upper levels. If you look there, you've got English, geography, history. So we're actually beginning to color the stress in the same way. So the students can, can use the material to, to have a guess. And I think whenever a word is the same, or very similar in Portuguese, rather than just the students say, Como se fala alguma coisa? they ask you to say the word. If you say guess and, th and then show them the stress, they can get very near. So whenever the words are similar, as a teacher, I don't tell them, I guess. There's too much telling in language teaching when the students might be able to find it for themselves. And what's more motivating than that? But give, let me give you a couple more examples. This is what I do on, on, on the very first lesson. If you just say to, you teach the, the chunk, I think Billy Eilish is, or I think the Rolling Stones, for example, my generation are, and then you say happy Christmas and you put those 13 adjectives there on the board. The students can then immediately start to exchange opinions and express who they are, their Brazilian identity in comprehensible English. They may mispronounce the words, but once they're saying the words, we can polish. If they don't say them, we can't polish. So what we need to do is facilitate the putting of words into students' mouths. And that's my tip is to add easy to use confidence building cognates whenever you can. So whenever you know which something related or close to what you're teaching, you throw it in and you generate a lot more fluency. So I think through vocabulary, through phrases, through just being in your head, think about the lesson from the perspective of a Brazilian child who speaks Portuguese, not from the perspective of an international idealized native approach, which is not going to happen anyway with two hours per week. True indeed, which is uh, something that Itanelis has just commented uh, in the chat, which is, to become a native speaker like user, 
uh, we have to be reborn. That's not the point, right? <laughs> no, stay, stay Brazilian, please stay. I love Brazil. I love Brazilians. They're much more than British people. You stay Brazilian. We'll fix the language. Don't worry about that. Yeah, and from that, I move on to my next question, which is quite linked, as in fact. Uh, you are known for being very practical and for giving practical tips in your talks and teachers usually tell us later, which is uh, we, we leave the session and we have some ideas. We want to get heads on, hands on and uh, try them on. So could you give us some examples of what you consider good teaching now uh, that would work equally for mm. class in class, in school or remotely? Yeah, uh, I, I've prepared something for you. This is a, a planted question, folks. <laughs> but, oh, did anyone notice? We talked oh, before. Oh, no, no, don't tell them, Nina. <laughs> okay, I'll, anyway, I'll... but what I've prepared is I think this is a this is how I teach digitally and or in the classroom. Particularly digitally, it works really, really well. Let's just I've used a page from Kids Web because obviously, you know, it's, it's material I know well. But you can do this. I promise you, with any visual book let's begin like this for the next three minutes could i ask you if you're if you're lucky enough to be with a, a study buddy a role play a pair of eight-year-olds if you're not if you're just alone as most of our students now are when we're teaching remotely just try to to respond as, as one of your children would okay uh, you can do it verbally you can do it in writing you can put it in the chat box you choose but there are lots of different ways of doing this okay so can you remember those images. I was talking and distracting you, so perhaps you can't, but that's how I would teach. I would flash up a visual page, give them a chance in pairs to remember all they can. If you're not in the classroom, they can do it testing themselves. They can switch off the microphones and say the words to themselves. They can switch on the microphones and speak to you. You can nominate all of them. You've got the whole range of options. Okay. That was the, then I show the page again. Okay. Another five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Then I take it away again. And again, I would ask you to, ah, I forgot the chinchilla, I forgot the ferret, et cetera, et cetera. So by simply flashing things at students on the screen, even if they're alone at home, they, they, that's, it's a constant self-testing approach, little self-test. And they know if they do it, they don't need you to sort of congratulate them or smack them or anything. They, they know that whether I've done it, I can do it, I can't do it. And if you want them to feed back in a chat box, so be it. But but ideally, of course, in the future, you can do this in the classroom. Then I take the images back up again. And all I've done is I've, I've screenshot 12 images from the book. If you're using the digital material, which is wonderful, from Kids Web, you can do this very, very easily. Just screenshot the, the images and then you can remove the text, work with the pictures, whatever you want. OK, what do you think this lesson's about? And of course, it's one of the many life skills, the special life skills sections we now have in Kids Web 3rd Edition. Um, it's all about animal care. So congratulations if you guessed it. If you want to sort of try and participate as a student in the chat box, Nina is monitoring you. There is a lollipop for the winner. Okay. Um, so let's quickly practice the vocabulary. Now, name the animal as fast as you can. If you're alone at home, you can still test yourself. Ha, 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 ha. So I showed you five of the six. Can any of you quickly ra race in the chat box? Anybody got the chat box? And this is the one which hasn't blacked up. So all I'm doing is giving you the opportunity to test yourself. And of course, you can get the, any amount of feedback at any stage. Anybody recognize what's changed? <laughs> I'm sure somebody knows. That's what's changed. I changed the position of two of the images. So it's awful or you kill creativity. I mean, and, and I, that's how I've always taught. It, 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 that's why I still act like a child in most of my life, but especially in the classroom, because I think through play, we make huge discoveries. And of course, the whole attitude to, of students to English will be much more open if it feels game like. And then we switch to the next six images, I'll ask you to name all six of them. You've seen the name already, so you may remember. I'll give you a clue just to help you. It's food, candy, shower, water, vaccine, and 
And every time you pause as a teacher, the students hopefully have the chance to fill that space. Even if they're alone, if they can say it before you, they can celebrate a monitor. If they don't, they get the feedback. So it's constant ping pong, ping pong, ping pong with the students. And everybody, whether alone or in a group, has a chance to measure themselves. And they always get the answer anyway. So there's, ah, oh, okay, oh, silly me, I forgot. Silly me, I forgot. Right, everybody, close your eyes. Don't go to sleep. In England, it's 9.30. It's past my bedtime. But you, in Brazil, it's before dinner. So you should be okay. Now, which one has gone? Mm. Okay. Close your eyes again. Everybody, don't cheat. I can see you over there in Minas Gerais. You're cheating. Close your eyes. Okay. Now, which one's gone? I've, I've taken two away. Which two have gone? And I would ask you to tell me in the box. Test yourself. Write it down. All the things. Okay. Close your eyes again. Even down south, Rio Grande. Come on. Close your eyes. Okay. Now, which two have I taken away again? And you, of course, will say or write or mentally process the two which have disappeared. Now, close your eyes one more time. Everybody need a two. Okay. Which three objects have gone? And there they are. Okay. So I've just I've accelerated. You've got the idea. So all I'm doing is test, 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 test. It's wonderful teaching. It's ping, pong, ping, ping. Pong, pong. Most teaching I've observed globally is ping, 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 ping from the teacher, and finally the students go pong. And it should be, it's not ping that rhythm you can do with any class. And the students, all they're saying is words food, water, ferret, dog. And, 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 and even alone, they're producing English. If their parents are watching them, they're amazed. Wow, you're talking to the screen. You're saying so many words. Just when you thought you were free, you have to drill yourself. Food, water, no, water goes, a uh, change, change. So what you're doing when I ask you to do that is you're repeating the words to yourself. What's the teacher doing? Absolutely nothing. Drinking a cup of coffee, counting my salary, feeling good for once. Okay, and there's, and there's the answer for you. So the, the idea of alphabetizing any four or five, six images, the students have to say them in English. Portuguese cannot help them. They're, they're processing and producing only six words. So that's how you can get them speaking, even to a screen. Um, now the challenge goes up again. Can you remember all 12 items? There are six animals and six connected items. I could ask you to write them all in the chat box. I could ask you to try and write them down without making a spelling mistake. There's lots and lots of ways I could do this, but I hope you get the idea. I'm constant little challenge, ping, pong, ping, pong, ping, pong. And I hope you're finding it fun too. Now you can go anywhere you like with this. Which ones have only one syllable? I've given you the answer there just because I'm accelerating through. It's just a demonstration. I wouldn't show you the pictures, but I am today. Happy Christmas for me. Uh, they're the three. When I ask you that, you have to say them to yourselves, don't you? Water, vaccine, chains. Ah, chains. So, again, it's a great way to practice syllabalization. Try and say that after a drink. <laughs> um, and then which ones begin with the same letter in Portuguese? Because of the nature of this presentation, I've given you the answer. That would take you quite a while. And that way, again, we're going back to where we were, working from what you know, contrast, and that contrast will help you notice. And note, it's all about noticing, really. If you want to build on existing knowledge, it helps you notice better than any other activity. Or which ones begin with the same sound in Portuguese? There's only one there, chuveiro, shower. Different spelling, but it's the same sound in English. I, I hope you get the message. All I'm doing is taking a page from a book and setting you lots and lots of quick challenges. Then the last activity, I think, for this section, just ranking. Whenever you want to get um, students to practice six, eight words, you can throw a ranking task at them. So tell me or type in or, or tell yourself the two you like the most, the two you hate, the ones you like the least, the ones which you've seen most in your city in Brazil, the ones you've seen the least, the longest word, the shortest word, the most expensive. By throwing superlative criteria at students, then they... They will come back uh, and they just simply produce the words chinchilla, chains, vaccine. So they're drilling themselves by interesting criteria. So all of that requires no preparation apart from having the images and a number of activities in your head. The key thing, it's like this flash, 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 ding dong. It really helps students alone not to feel quite so lonely. So there I've 
I've summarized for you more or less what I've done. Um, I take a screenshot or you can download this later from the video platform. All of those, basically, those are the steps I took you through. And I would argue that you can do that with any visual page. Obviously, we would like you to do it with Kids Web for obvious reasons. But uh, you could do that. In particular, it works, I think, with the life skills lessons which we have in Kids Web. And also, if I can move on, to in the CLIL lessons. We have fabulous CLIL lessons in all five levels of, of Kids Web. And you can see there all of those images of art. This is from level one of Kids Web. You could do the similar sort of thing just flash 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 put, put them up change the order etc with any of the the clear lessons which are so wonderful in uh kids web third edition okay i hope that's useful that's to answer your question nina that's how i teach that's how i, I used to teach in the black and white days before you were born with flashcards and now of course it's much more fun digitally and if you're wise as a teacher, once the students get the idea, this, the geeks in your class can begin to actually do this for you. They can start to cut up the images and send you little mini presentations, which you can then use to get the students to test each other or test themselves through your classes. I hope that was useful. Yes, was indeed. Uh, we have another comment from Itana. And she says, are you still for drilling? Uh, because she says, noticing is the golden key. Absolutely. I, that, I think most of what I just did with you, I would you call, sorry, I just love it. Um, <laughs> the uh, Most of what we just did was drilling. All I was doing was you know, asking you to, and, and I could ask you to shout the words, I could ask you to whisper the words, I could ask, say it three times to yourself, say it twice to yourself, say it slowly, say the words, chinchilla, 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 say it as quickly as you can. Any Any amount of repetition must be useful, provided it's fun. It's only not fun and ineffective when it becomes boring. And I think what I'm trying to do is just seed little ingredients for you to make it less less, less boring and a lot more fun for the students. But yes, drilling is cool. Ironically, the, over the last two or three years, um, most of the, I've been watching a lot of classes in Mexico. So it's not Brazil, but it's Mexico, but it is still Latin America. It's amazing how little drilling you see. And I do think how, when you've got a large class and very few, hours to teach it's a great way of getting the students to participate and to practice true indeed and um it does make a lot of difference when you actually do it and the way you you suggest it's always making students think and make connection at the same time they're drilling it's just um you create the level of challenge, yeah. sorry to interrupt but it's 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 the level of challenge needs to be right and all, all the all you had to say at any time there was a maximum of six words I didn't ask you ever to say more than six words. And you, you asked me how to get students producing. Well, I, I think what I showed you there is a whole range of techniques which you can apply to most classes if you want to. And it just adds that playful element. I'm pretty sure the maths teacher and the geography teacher don't do that kind of thing. So I think it's to our advantage as teachers to get students you know, talking to the screen. The parents might wonder what's going on. But uh, nevertheless, you know, the parents will probably be highly motivated because the child is producing so many words. Yes, I guess you did answer Itana's uh, question. And I so. <laughs> then, then I, will, I will move on to the next one, which is you have always been into pronunciation and have invented several, several phonemic charts, like the contrastive one that we have in English ID. Could you show us some more useful activities for kids? Uh, and there, there you go, already. <laughs> Miracle. God, how did I do this? It's incredible. Oh. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, if you look at that one, if you haven't seen it, it's in uh, ID, which is an adult course. But the chart, I think, lends itself to, to children's teaching. If you want to go this way. You've got the three, you can see that the little S and little P, the blue bubbles, uh, indicates which of the sounds are difficult for Portuguese or Spanish speakers. So what we should be doing are six mix difficult. Uh, 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 just sim simply show students most of the sounds of English are, are, are relatively easy for you as a Portuguese speaker. I don't think you need to teach phonetics. I don't thing you need to even address all the sounds but I do think we need to pull out the sounds which are difficult for our students for example um, here so what I'd like you to do now viewers it's over to you 
Uh, if you are over, try and produce all the words on the left, rain and so on. If you are under one meter 60, then I'd like you to try and produce all the words on the right hand side. For example, hat, hands, heart. Off you go, guys. And Nina, see who can get five words down the fastest in the chat box. Go. Yeah, let's let's <laughs> check. <laughs> Again, to go back to your, your previous question. Um, this is a form of drilling too. I'm not sure if if people uh, are following you because uh, I think your connection got a bit um, bad. Uh, can you repeat, okay. please? Paul? Well, the idea. Let me. So, uh, the, the the taller members of the audience, if you're over one meter sixty, or if you've got uh, great hair, or if you're a woman, or if you're wear, oversized seven shoes, or any any number of divisions you like divide the class into half of them say the r words on the left and the other half try and produce the h words on the right um so it's radio robot rose run r road runner red round rocks rainbow river rich for example on the left or on the right uh, you've got hat to rat so you can move between the two these sounds we know are extremely difficult for our students. So what I think we should do is you don't need to teach all the sounds, but you clearly need to do, to work on R and H initially, um, the words I'm looking for, okay? And I do think this visual approach, you can do exactly all those tricks I've just shown you. It took me, honestly, it took me 10 minutes to assemble that. I just went to Google Image and I just I, I produced a wee collage of R and her, and you can ask students to to choose their favorite, which is the biggest, the smallest, and all they're doing again is repeating and drilling and saying the words as many times as you like. So what do you wear on your head? A hat. What's so an, an animal associated with, with dirt? Rat. So getting the students to say the words, you can add all manner of things to this. But what I like, screensaver. So students are working online. If if you've finished, the teacher flashed this up, or if you're back in the classroom next year, perhaps you can have a poster, two posters. I used to do this when I was teaching in Spain uh, with the, the, the sounds next to each other, and the students can sit back and just repeat all the words and drill them and talk to individual students who've got problems with a clear task. So it's a nice little screensaver too. Those are the words which I chose. Um, and what I was trying to show you too is that if you want to break the class in halves, here are a number of ways you can get different students to speak. I asked the taller and shorter ones, curly, straight hair. You can do A's and B's, pairs, small groups, one. So I think as a teacher, you just need to keep these things up your sleeve. Um, and whenever you want to practice something, divide the class in various ways. Obviously, if we were in class, we'd say the left and the right but you can do the same sort of thing online using some of those variations. I'm sure you've got more as well. Let me show you one more thing to do with pronunciation. As you know, it's my obsession, but it, I think, I genuinely think that with Portuguese speakers, we need to give as much time to pronunciation and spelling as we do to grammar, because the grammar of English is relatively easy. It's more similar than it is different for Portuguese speakers. But actually, what they struggle with much more is spelling uh, and 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 pronunciation, and a lot of it can be fun. So, here's a little activity I like, perhaps for older students. Yeah, fourth grade, fifth grade. All you have, to, <coughs> excuse me. All you have to do is get a. You've got an a, a, angry apple, bored bear, k, k, crazy camel, d, d, dead duck. What could be energetic? An energetic. Anybody? <laughs> it's supposed to be an elephant but never mind that flapping I got it. I got it. <laughs> then you could have a f -f what could a f -f be nothing rude please a f -f okay. et etc et and okay you might think that's too difficult for students but then if you want to do that this I, my students love this because it's a little race and they're going k -k -k -j 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 <laughs> drilling themselves again uh you can add in some cognates. So if you want to help them to do it, 
you could put some cognates up to begin with. And all of these words, apart from the nationalities, German is not quite the same. Uh, all of these words are happy Christmas for our students. They're cognates. So if you, you can easily get students through you know, your knowledge of Portuguese through cognates, producing far more language, even if they mispronounce them. It's so much fun to come up with an adjective noun combination to practice those sounds. So that's the sort of thing that I would favor, Nina. Let me show you one more since you asked. <laughs> before, before you move, yeah. before you move uh, and show me that one, I would like to add in some comments. Uh, oh, which is uh, Marcelo Souza. He said, I love Paul. He's pra as practical as efficient. So you, 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 here you go. And uh, Elise, Hay, Elise Hay said, She loves Kids Web. It's excellent. Uh, which oh. is good to know. Thank you, Elise. And and I have two questions about Ooh. that, that uh, Raha activity, uh -huh. which is uh, Cecilia Lemos. She asked if would students do this at the same time. So she would like you to explore a little bit more how you would use them, maybe if I got it right. And um the Isabella Suarez commented that the students are always confused by these two sounds so it's very relevant uh -huh. that you pointed it out and brought it to us today so the question would be well, I think would students visually, do this it's always appealing if you just look at the so dividing the, the, the class into short and tall uh, shoe size, male, female, and get them perhaps oh, to try halves, then they could switch. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry? Your, vo your voice was cut for a while, so could you oh, start answering it back again, please? I'll try. Sorry about this. I think it's uh, the internet is quite it's saturated. In the but I'll let the you internet. know when it happens. Okay, fine. Just wave, Nina. I can see you. Um, the... You could what I did with you was divide you in half, male, female, tall, short, etc. So you, you could do half each. You could set it for a homework, you could just give the image and the students have to find the words. You could put the list of words into uh, one of the uh, many voice readers that you can find online. Just ask students to listen to the words and try to repeat them. You you could it, Google Translate if you put all of those words into Google Translate and ask students to listen to them. They can hear red, rabbit, rain, rat, and try to imitate. And they can record themselves and compare with the voice on Google, for example, simply on Google Translate. Uh, obviously, there are too many words at once there, but it's a nice revision activity. Um, and I think what you can do with KidsWeb, of course, is you can find a lot of these images in the glossary and in the picture dictionary at the end of the course. So you can pull these images together more easily. Or as a teacher, you could just give the students a list of words, ask them to find the images. But I, I just, obviously, it's too much at once as, as, as a sort of plonk on the students. But as a revision activity, a review activity, put, putting them together, if you look through the glossary at the back of Kids Web, you can find examples of most of, most of these words anyway. And I think if, just by putting them together, it's clearly oriented towards our students. I hope that answers. And, and hold, hold, hold that thought. Uh, Augusto Cesar Gil asked, how often should we do that? No, uh, that it's hard. No, I, I mean, as often as you, as you think your students can tolerate it. <laughs> My feeling is it's 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 only part. All you're doing is teaching vocabulary. What you could do is ask students to do it once as words. So rad, red, rabbit, rain. And then another time, come back and perhaps uh, level, fourth, fourth grade, fifth grade, ask them to put on the articles because then you've got a whole new class to teach the articles. A red rabbit, but not a rain. Why? Well, we that's a that's a teaching point. A rat, a radio, running on a road, round rocks. Again, there's no uh, for the plural. So I, I, I would I would drip feed them. The, the beautiful thing about visual collages is you can just keep them up your sleeve and then drop them in whenever you wish. So if you've got five minutes at the end of a class, you could use it as a revision activity. Just pulling things together, even if sounds which exist in Portuguese, the students love to say, you know, blue, moon, shoe. It's just it's the rhythm of repeating words with similar sounds. So just I do think we need to tie things together with a pronunciation focus much more than simply a vocabulary focus. 
So you could use this to teach adjective noun. There's there's all kinds of things you could do. And, and then, but what I do is I have a, a whole series of visual collages like the ones I'm showing you. And this one I'm going to show you next, which is for the students to practice as and when we feel like it. If they're, if they're not enjoying the text or the listening that we're doing. Okay, guys, for five minutes, try to remember these words. And then we'll go back. So I, I don't think teaching should be so linear. Teaching needs to be circular. So I like to start something move away and come back because that way you pick up the weaker students they've got more time to subconsciously process so keeping all of these things up your sleeve allows you to bring in some variety not not ju not just for the students but for yourself as soon as you feel the energy's lagging if you're teaching at the end of the day and everybody just wants to get away if you just bring in one or two of these fun things it seems to me that's what you know more effective more playful more likely to work with our age group so here's another example, if I can just keep going, because then maybe more questions will come. All the words here end in all, which is probably the most difficult sound for Brazilians. Um, for example, you've got ball and bell and bicycle. So simply pausing yourself as a teacher before you say the words, the students get the opportunity to say it. So rather than say ball, bell, bicycle, repeat, if you pause, the next one is b -b 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 bottle. So the students are almost speaking with you. So I think that's the way to, I've always taught, just give a little, give a little, give more, give clues, and get the students to try and join in with you. If they like you, if you're playful, they'll get so much satisfaction in saying bottle before you do. And they might say bottle. And then when they hear bottle from you, they get the feedback. Oh, I wasn't quite right, but I don't feel bad because the teacher didn't tell me off. I get the feedback. Again, it's that ping pong approach. So there they are. Can anybody tell me what the purple one is in the middle? It's two words together. Well, uh, there's there's a delay. Anybody so got it? Let's see. Okay, so oh, it's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Technology. Well, I got it wrong. Okay, so. well, I'll, I'll put you out of your misery. <laughs> <laughs> it's purple people. <laughs> yeah. There you I go, just to put you out of your misery. There are the answers, okay? And of course, you can find images, for example, more injury, oh, volleyball. I want, I want reply now only, Paul. There's a delay. So, uh, group work and people, that's what we got. <laughs> Nearly. Sorry, purple people. Yeah. It's one of my yes. favorite tongue twisters, purple people. Try and say it five times. It's really fun. Okay, they were Thais and Laerci that uh, gave that answers. But yeah, Perfect. Congratulations, girls. Lula will, uh, Nina will send you a lollipop. <laughs> anyway, so again, this is one of those ones that I just have up my sleeve. You just keep it around so when, when you know, things are flagging, you can put in some energy. Everybody say those words. It's a drill. It's repetitive, but it's very satisfying if you can do it as a student. And, of course, they are practicing a key point. Okay. Lots of images at the back of the, the picture dictionary section. If you look on, online in the, on the Richmond website, you'll find all sorts of support for this type of thing with the picture dictionary there. And, again, in the glossary in Kids Web 2, you get even more images too. So you could pull out some of the images there to do the same sort of thing. So that's a commercial moment for you, but um, you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to give you lots and lots of little tricky things that you can pull out just to energize the students. It doesn't change your day-to-day -day teaching, but it could if you just think ping pong, ping pong, because students are not gonna start speaking English, but they will respond in English. And if you can generate fast responses, then you're doing pretty well. Back okay. to you. Okay, Paul, because of the delay, I missed the moment and people trying to guess the animal. If, <laughs> if you were not live, I would ask you to do it again, but I can tell you what they guessed. Would you like to know? Please tell me. Well, we got Isabella said elephant, uh, Cecilia <laughs> said elephant, but we have uh, somebody saying emu, emu. <laughs> Emu. Somebody a said uh, a Emu. fantastic fox, a fantastic fox with that <laughs> with an adjective there. there and uh, Yannette said a fast a fast fox. So it was between elephant and fox mostly. 
the oh, answers good. we got. Oh, well. uh, it, Congratulations, it, I, all of you. <laughs> I'll, I'll work. I'll work. Okay, and now I move on to another question because we do have uh, time for one more question, um, which is, well, uh, two then, and then we, okay, let's, um, uh, think, thinking about what, linking to what you, you were showing before, which is working with uh, the glossary and what you can do, you know, drawing from that. Um, you're very keen on working with uh, phrase books and, and having a, 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 um, a phrase book uh, sound approach. So why Absolutely. is that? Why is that? Well, I think whenever I've traveled myself, I've always tried to learn phrases for, you know, thank you, uh, excuse me, please help, that sort of thing. And I think what I've, I've done for years, this come, this goes back 25 years in the first book I wrote for Richmond, you know, having, I include a phrase book for teachers, a phrase book for students walking together. That's fairly common. You see that in many classrooms. What I think is important for us online teaching, if you're going to ask students to work in breakout rooms, or if you're going to ask students to do anything interactive, perhaps even with their parents, what you need to do is add a frame. So for example, try and put a few phrases on the screen, which they can use. So when the students are doing an exercise from the book or a written exercise or hopefully something in a breakout room with a study buddy, then you can give them a little frame like that, for example, just a few phrases they can use. The strong students will use them. The weaker students will at least be introduced to them and have the opportunity to try. Um, obviously, I've just put this up as a huge thing. You couldn't teach all of this, but it might help teachers, I thought. is um, I'm, I'm building a sort of collaborative techno phrase book for, for distance learning for remote teaching and these are the the most common phrase by far is can you hear me your microphone's off that the, i think students if you're giving them a little phrase book along these lines it, it's a wonderful thing to do and you can always ask them for homework the phrase you've used most google translate it or ask your parents to find a translation of it and try to memorize that phrase and teach each other so phrases are lovely chunks which you can teach each other you can self-diagnose you can contribute them and the teacher can help polish with with pronunciation, um, of course. Yeah, this is. If you look, sorry, Paul. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that, I'm really thinking in terms of remote teaching. All of these things, all of these things have come from my own experience as as a classroom teacher. It would be much more interesting because the students are inevitably going to be learning more things through the technology, which is why I'm so in favor of, for example, Google Translate and so on, because it's so, so, so effective. What what do I want to say? I can find it in a second. Over, over, over. Uh, Paul, we're heading to the end of our session today. And I would like you what message, uh, I would like to ask you, what message would you like to give us uh, all that are here watching from Brazil uh, as we head to the end of this uh, live? Uh -huh. So that means well, that, that, that spontaneous questions I was going to ask, we are skipping and we're moving, <laughs> we're moving on to this last message you would like to send us here in Brazil. Okay, well, uh... It's hard to, to, there's so many things. I, you have no idea how much I miss you all. I miss your country. I miss Brazil. So thank you for giving me a little feeling of being back in, in your wonderful country. I, oh, I can't wait to come back. That's my first message. Everybody says the same thing, but I promise you, <laughs> God, I miss Brazil. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for attending. Can I, can I finish with a sort of something more? Yeah. Please, we'll do this again, because as you know, there's a lot more slides we haven't had time for. But uh, let yeah. me push you Please. towards this. This is my summary. Again, there'll be three, three things on the screen which you might want to screenshot or think about. Our students speak Portuguese. We know it has to be for them. What wasn't fashionable but should be now because it's, it's absolutely ridiculous to prohibit Portuguese when the kids are at home. One thing is please try not to speak Portuguese in an English class, but in these days where the students are surrounded by grandma and grandpa and everybody, the TV, all the media is in Portuguese and we say, think in English, it's even more absurd. So what I'm suggesting we need to do is look for more 
positive cross-lingual activities, for example, building connections, recognizing cognates, asking them to guess the pronunciation of words before you tell them, trying to make words potentially English, which are, 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 are taking Portuguese words and trying to make them English. They sometimes work, it sometimes doesn't, but at least they're trying, it's creative. Send them towards bilingual resources. Obviously, dictionaries, we've talked about Google Translate. Vagalume is a dream because we were going to talk about songs today, but we haven't had a chance. There are wonderful karaoke activities, for example, in, in um, Kids Web. Uh, but just having a bilingual song text is a marvelous way to learn a language. So Vagalume, for me, is, is, is the bee's knees. Um, and I've said much of that already. <laughs> Building their own phrase books, we've touched that as well. So you can see that, I hope you see there's a line running through what we've been trying to say today, which is, you know, look on Portuguese as a, a wonderful thing and pick from it wisely. Use your own knowledge of both languages to shape your teaching to the advantage of, of all Brazilians. And I'm sure if you go along these roads, particularly in these strange times where the students are able to do so much alone and sorts of different things from before, then we might have some success. It's not going to be easy. It never is. But uh, good luck to all of you. And thank you very much for coming along. Beijão. Paul, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a question. Oh, uh, God. Um, Laerte asked, where can we hear um, more of Paul? And before you answer, you know that people that use Kids Web, that actually oh, have used yeah. <laughs> there are there are training videos from Paul Sellinson in the portal. So, but then I pass it on to you now, which is where can we hear more from Paul? Well, uh, as soon as I can get on a plane, I'll come and see you all personally if I possibly can. Uh, I think there are one or two videos around of me on YouTube, looking young and hairy, which is quite frustrating at my age. Um, I, I'm trying to upload a few more things onto the Richmond websites. We're, 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 there are a number of projects in the pipeline, so stay tuned and hopefully you'll see some more. I promise if, if you're interested and I'm happy to have another go at this sort of thing because it's so much fun being with you all. And uh, if you find it useful, then I'm happy to have another go. So I think that for today, that's all I can say. But tr trust me, I, it's all muito so, so de vocês. I really do miss you and I want to get back and in to Brazil as fast as I can. Good luck with your teaching, everybody. I mean, really, 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 this is my last message. You know, I'm, okay. I'm just on the website, and muito obrigado, and beijos. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's so strange. Oh, people have been thanking you. Roberta Prior says, amazing, Paul. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, let me see, Itana, who has participated and asked some questions, is saying also thank you and thanking Richmond as well. Um, Eliana Nev is saying thank you. It was simply excellent. Let me see what oh. else. Cecilia Bernus, thank you, Paul. Lots of practical ideas, lots of good ideas. And, uh, well, um, Larissa, it's always a pleasure to hear from you. And uh, like actually you said, definitely counts counts on me. I'll be there. That means I think in response to you no. saying that you'll come as soon as you can. <laughs> and um, Augusto says, "I saying, Paul, long time no see. Uh, where should I do my delta? <laughs> this is totally out of focus. We won't have time to answer that." But he asked. Okay, so uh, now I move on to. <laughs> And to closing it, for real. <laughs> closing it for real. Um, so thank you, Paul, so much for being with us, for uh, sharing with us all your knowledge and that energy that you have with us. <laughs> and uh, it was amazing. Thank you. And I would like to send a message you, to all of you that are there live. Uh, I would like to remind you that you have access to the Richmond Share blog. It's 100% digital and it's free and you can find it in our richmond.com.br portal. Also, follow us on social media so that you can be always informed firsthand uh, into news that we broadcast and post for our for teachers that our uh, clients and schools that are our partners.
Well, thank you very much for participating. You were amazing. Uh, I am sorry for the delay into getting your comments into poll, but everything worked well. Uh, so thank you very much. Hope to see you again in the next uh, Voices of Education uh, video. Uh, well, I, sorry. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>